Why did you want to tell this story? Why did you want to make this movie? I guess the question is why not tell this story? You know, it's such an amazing story. You know, Alejandro Jodorowsky is such an amazing guy. Um, his film history, his comic book history, his novel history, his paintings, his poetry, his work on the tarot cards, all that stuff. Um, and when you hear that there's a lost film, a lost project, which was going to be his follow-up to Holy Mountain, yeah, you know, and you learn about all the crazy people that were going to be involved in in his version of Dune, you know, make it just screams to be to be told. My ambition was tremendous. I wanted to make something sacred, una película que diera las alucinaciones de LSD, si tomara LSD to change the young mind of all the world. Were you a fan of Jodorowsky's work? I was, uh, I was a huge fan of his movies. That was all that I was familiar with. Was it hard to convince Jodorowsky to participate in the documentary? No, it was, uh, it was surprisingly easy. You know, he's, he's done a couple of interviews recently where he said that, um, that when I first came into his apartment to meet with him, you know, not to shoot, but just to meet with him for the first time, that he said when I, the first time I came in that he thought I was mad. He thought I was a crazy person, which is fantastic. I mean, to be called crazy by Jodorowsky, to be called mad by Jodorowsky is, you know... It's like a badge of honor. A badge of honor, exactly. <laughs> I wear that with pride. Um, but I don't think that he really thought that we were going to finish the film, that we were going to be successful in telling the story. Maybe he thought this would be yet one more uh, lost dune of his. Um, but after many years of you know going back and shooting more and editing and editing, we did finally finish it, obviously. Um, but it was it was easy. I think he was kind of like, yeah, sure, let's make the movie, sure, knock yourself out. But he didn't really, uh, which was great for us because it allowed him to sit down for these interviews and to be totally honest. He could just yeah. tell us any of these stories because he didn't care how he looked. He wasn't trying to put on some sort of you know affectation or anything like that. He was just telling us the truth, telling us these stories. Yeah. I wanted to make something sacred, free, with new perspective, open the mind. How was it for you when you first met him? Were you, I don't know, nervous because you're, you know, he has kind of an aura around him, I suppose, or? Uh... I was terrified, terrified the first time I met him. I mean, walking into his apartment, you know, he's a, he's a myth. He's not a real person. He's, you know, he's like a like a unicorn or something. I don't know. He's not, you know, you don't expect him to live in a in an apartment. And he lives in an apartment yeah. in Paris. And you would think maybe he would live in a teepee. Maybe he would live in a tree or something. Because he's not a human being. No. Um, he's but I met him. He's beyond. Yeah, he's something <laughs> magical and amazing. Um, so I was terrified. You know, I was nervous and terrified. And you know, I was already sweating and kind of breathing hard and nervous and when I got to his apartment he lives on the fourth floor and I had to walk up the fourth floor because the elevator was broken so then I was extra nervous and extra out of breath and I just probably looked like a mad person <laughs> you know, what he thought I guess but I was terrified oh my god but he was quite nice out of here but he was he was quite nice but he was a little bit distant I think he was kind of like okay tell me what you want to do yeah. um, but he wasn't like you know Mr. Friendly at first because probably people contact him all the time with strange requests Sure. Um, I would imagine, like this. Yeah. Watching the film, I couldn't escape the feeling that although Jodorowsky says not getting the film made isn't a failure, there seemed to be some intense sadness in his expression every once in a while. Well, I mean, how could you not be? I mean, you spend, you know, we spent three years making this documentary, and let's say after two years, or after the three years, let's say, um, I wasn't able to finish it. And let's say even worse, you know, eight years from now, somebody else comes along, somebody I admire, and they get to tell the story. Yeah. And they tell it, and it's out on the screen, and it's, you know, that's devastating. It must be horrible. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I assume that the worst thing, at least for me, um, putting myself in his shoes would be the rejection. Would be the told, you know, being told that you're too weird, you're too out there, you're, you're too much. Um, so I think it's taken him years to kind of get over that. Um, 
you know but and the way that he looks at it as being this positive experience is you know look at all the influence that it's had look at all the people look at all my spiritual warriors how their careers have changed yeah. look what I've done um, I mean that's all totally true but there's got to be a smidgen somewhere in him I um, think that I think pain. that came through it has to be film. although he has more positivity than anyone else in that situation when he speaks about it in the film you know he doesn't say we were drawing the film he says we were shooting the film yeah he doesn't say oh we would go to the you know to the studio and and every day we would start drawing at nine o'clock he says every day we would start shooting at nine o'clock and that mobius was his camera and he really feels that he made the film yeah you know, he did the work it's all there in that book it's ready to go um, yeah so it's really an interesting very unique perspective i think mobius is one of the key players mm -hmm. who is not in the film right uh, he was sick when you began shooting, I right. think, right? Yeah, he was sick, um, and then he died while we were shooting. Yeah. So we we were trying to speak with him and trying to get him to come on camera, but he just wasn't well enough to be on screen and didn't want to present himself like that. So I was wondering, though, why did you choose not to use any old footage uh, about him uh, when he talked about June? Because there is such footage. There is, but it's all been used before. And I didn't want to, I mean, we played with that from, you know, there's a really great Mobius documentary. Um, he's, there's, you know, old footage of him from TV and stuff, but it's like, anytime he's talking about Dune, you've seen it before. So it felt weird to pull it from something else. It just would have felt maybe more TV movie to do that or something, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, so we, we really lucked out when it came to, you know, to Dan O'Bannon because we managed to find that audio recording which no one had ever heard before and, and we could kind of bring that to life with animation and stuff yeah. like that. But with Mobius, it's like he's such a great artist that I think we felt let's just let the art speak for itself because he's not in the film, but he is in the film. You sure. know, he's all over the film. He's totally represented. Everyone's speaking about him. Um, so to me, he's very much... Um, alive in, in the movie. Michel Siduc said to me, I want to make a new picture with you. What do you want to do? I say, Dune. And he said, yes. Is it true that your documentary got Joe Roski and Michel Siduc back together again after all these years and then they made a movie? True. That is true. <laughs> Brilliant. That made your work movie so, worth It was so perfect. Trouble, yeah, right? just yes. to be able to kind of reunite them and then you get a whole new a whole new Jodorowsky film out of it. It was kind of incredible. Yeah, you know? Splendid. It was, it was amazing. How did Jodorowsky react to the documentary? It was interesting because when we were making it, I didn't know if he was going to kind of be all over us. You know, if he was going to be over my shoulder, if he was going to be looking at everything, that's not good, I would do it this way, you know. But he really left us alone. He just let us make the film. So the first time he saw it was at the premiere at Cannes. Um, so, which was terrifying, you know, showing the film there for the first time, the guy that it's about. You know, this incredible director mm -hmm. is there. Um, I was more nervous than when I met him the first day. And I was sitting here, and his wife was sitting here, and, and he was sitting there. And the whole time I kept kind of looking over to see, is he, you know, is he enjoying it? Is he laughing? Uh, and he seemed to be very enthralled, really concentrating on it. And towards the end, I could look over, and he and his wife are, are wiping tears away, which was a good sign, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, so it was over and the credits rolled and then I leaned over I said and so what did you think and he just turned and said it's perfect and he really loves it like he really you know he's seen it a bunch of times since then and he really it's amazing he really really loves it on a été reçu d'une façon toujours correcte extrêmement sympathique mais avec toujours la même réponse mais on comprend pas que le metteur votre metteur en scène i think that his dune did not get made because he was too far in advance he was too far ahead of the times. There was nothing for these Hollywood studios to compare it to. You know, there was no Star Wars yet. There was no science fiction explosion. Um, and studios care about making money. You yeah. know, that's what they wanted. That's what they all they care about. And back then, they didn't. They were not convinced that there was money to be made in science fiction. Um, so he was ahead of the game on that. Um, he was ahead in. Um, you know, he speaks in the film about, oh, I wanted it to be as long as it should be. If it's 12 hours, 12 hours. If it's 20 hours, 20 hours. And you think, this is the, you know, ramblings of a crazy person. But 
now there's what six Star Wars films plus three more. Yeah. Soon there's going to be nine. There's what six Lord of the Rings movies. Each of them are three hours. It's like seven Harry Potter movies. You know, people have the desire to see longer stories. I, I think know? if Star Wars would have happened before Jodorowsky right. introduced his idea, right? Maybe it would have been made more easily then. But maybe he wouldn't have been interested in that though. You know, that's the thing. It's like yeah. it came to him and he wanted to make something that nobody else had done before. Yeah. Once someone else does something like it, you know, he's never made anything that has been seen before. Oh, you know, that's, 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 that's for sure. You know? <laughs> that's for sure. No, that's for sure. And was it hard to get your documentary made, to, to get the money together and so on? Uh, it's all independently financed um, between myself and my executive producer. You know, it's all of our own personal money. Is oh, in really? It. Yeah, yeah. That was How much did way. you spend? Oh, I mean, it's a lot for for us it's a lot for me certainly but probably in the grand scheme of you know compared to other movies um, it's on the lower end but, but like uh, a million or uh... oh, I mean we, we never exactly say we always just say it's you know okay it's on the low end for sure you know? I don't mean to pry but <laughs> no, I'm, no, curious. No, no I'm curious <laughs> you know, I'm curious um, that's your job absolutely yeah. well this was your second outing as a documentary maker yeah. as a director and before this you mainly produced television am I right right uh, Paranormal State, I heard, and Scrappers. You also did Room Raiders I, at one point. You know Room Raiders? Yeah, it's here on uh, MTV. Really? Because there's oh no gosh. music on MTV. There's just right. It's just horrible, horrible shows like Room Raiders. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, but yeah. I worked on Room Raiders. I worked on. Uh, well, I was never creative on these shows. You know, it was always like logistics. Yeah. You know, make sure everyone knows where to go and we have the equipment and all that. Because you can't be creative on those things. It's just. Those things are what they are. Sure, you know? and it's very formulaic, right? Yeah, so it's and completely the same. It's and beyond, uh, yeah. Where's the ghost? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, is directing more documentaries uh, the way you're headed in the future? I hope so. That'd be nice, you know. Um, I mean, I don't know if it's documentaries, I don't know if it's films, whatever it is, you know. I don't know. I you don't know. know. I don't know exactly. I mean, I, the only thing I know is that whatever I do next. Um, I need to be sure that it's something that makes Jodorowsky proud. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like he really gave me something amazing. He gave me this amazing gift to tell this, you know, to, to tell this story. Um, yeah. And it's given back to me so much. You know, I mean, the experiences I'm here in Amsterdam. Like, why would I be in Amsterdam if it wasn't for this film? You yeah. know, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be traveling the world. I wouldn't be meeting all these people. I wouldn't be sharing this with the world. Um, so I've really been given something amazing and I don't want to squander that. Mm -hmm.